Okay, ladies and gentlemen, continuing on with our inscribed angle lesson here, we have some theory, uh, theorems over inscribed angles, namely three of them. Now, the good news about these three, and it always is this case, is they are pretty recognizable problems. This one doesn't look like this one. This one doesn't look like this one. They're all a little different, so when we go through these examples, you can kind of see which one to use. You'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, so the first one. Uh, and this one's a little difficult to see, so stay with me, all right? 10-6. If two inscribed angles of a circle intercept congruent arcs or the same arc, then the angles are congruent, okay? So here, the example we're saying is that the measure of angle MSA is congruent to the measure of angle MRA. So MSA and MRA are the same. Now, those are those two angles down at the bottom here, guys. Okay, so I'm going to try to get you to see it. MSA intercepts arc MA. MRA intercepts arc MA. So both of these angles intercept the same arc. Okay, that's what we're talking about. So because they both intercept the same arc, they're automatically going to be congruent. Okay, now that also applies to if you have two congruent arcs and angles intercepting those arcs, then they'll be congruent, okay? But that's not the situation here. Here we have two intercept inscribed angles intercepting the same arc, so they are congruent, all right? Now, 10-7, we're gonna go through all three, then we'll do examples, but we'll be jumping back to them, all right? 10-7, if an inscribed angle intercepts a semicircle, then the angle is automatically a right angle. So again, we've already done an example like this on the front, now I'm giving you the theorem for it. We see RS is a diameter. Line segment RS is a diameter. It is important to watch out for that, guys, because that means this whole piece, both sides, is going to automatically be 180. So half that intercepted arc, which would be here, our inscribed angle, that's automatically 90 degrees, guys. So if you see a triangle with one of its sides being a diameter and another angle being on the circle itself, that's automatically a right triangle. Now that'll open up trig, that'll open up Pythagorean theorem to solve for different pieces, so heads up for that, okay? So that's important because we have a diameter. Semicircles, half of that would be a right angle. And 180 divided by two gives us 90, okay? Now last one's when we have an inscribed quadrilateral, okay? If a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, then its opposite angles are supplementary, okay? So here we could say like, a and M, angle A and angle M, they're across the figure from each other, they're supplementary, they add up to 180. R and S, they're across the figure from each other, they add up to 180. Now what this also means, and if you remember back to our lesson over polygons and angle measures in polygons, it's a quadrilateral, so the interior angles are all gonna add up to 360. So one plus two plus three plus four all add up to 360. So across is 180, across is 180, but remember all four add up to 360. You may have to use that as well, okay? All right, so there's the three theorems, guys. Let's go ahead and work through three examples, and we got our big example at the end, okay? So here on number 10, in quadrilateral WRTZ, find the measure of angle T and the measure of angle Z. So we're looking for the measure of angle T and the measure of angle Z. Now it tells us it's a quadrilateral, so I'm already thinking over here, guys, using the quadrilateral theorem it gave me. Opposite angles are supplementary. Well, there you go. That's what we're gonna be using here, guys. So when we look at angle Z, R up top is 100, so Z down bottom is just gonna be 80. Again, we're trying to add up to 180, okay? Same thing with W and T, okay? All right, W and T, so 180 minus 45, that's gonna give us 135. Does everybody see we got that? Okay, so again, 80 degrees, they're across the figure from each other, they add up to 180. And then, of course, that would be 135 degrees adding up to 180, okay? So, quadrilateral rule on that first one. Now, number 11 here, it's pretty easy to see which theorem we're talking about, which one looks like it. Hey, there it is. That'd be 10-6, two angles intercepting the same arc. So, here it gives us measures for those two angles. Let's check it out, okay? All right, now, because we have the measure of angle PSQ and the measure of angle PRQ that both intercept this arc PQ, that means these are automatically congruent, guys. And that's all automatic markings I just made there. So it gives me measures for measure of angle one and measure of angle two. So because they're congruent, I'm gonna set them equal. So X equals 
2x minus 30, okay? So I'll just go ahead and subtract 2x from both sides. We're gonna go negative here, but that's not that big of a deal. So negative x equals negative 30. Divide both sides by negative one, get that negative out of there. X equals 30. Again, a bunch of y'all could have probably done that in your head, no doubt, okay? So 30 is our x. Now that's not our final answer. We gotta plug back in. But we can see that the measure of angle one is just X. So the measure of angle one is just gonna be 30 degrees. And we don't even have to plug in for measure of angle two because it's congruent. We know it's 30 degrees, okay? All right, so a little expansion on this problem would be what is the measure of arc PQ? Arc PQ, well, if they're both 30, we double it to get the measure of the intercepted arc, so that would be 60 degrees, okay? Just a little expansion on that problem there, okay? All right, guys, number 12 here. We can look back up top. Well, inscribe quadrilateral. That's what I'm probably going to be using, okay? Again, we did one of these on the previous page, okay? Um, so here we go. We take a look. It says we have the inscribed quadrilateral, so I'm already thinking opposite angles are supplementary. We have L and N, which have measures. They are across the figure from each other. So this is what we're going to add up to 180. So this is going to be 8X plus 10X equals 180. Okay, so 18X equals 180. Divide both sides by 18. All right, we get x equals positive 10 there. x equals positive 10. We take that, we plug it back in. So measure of angle L would be 80 degrees, 8 times 10. Measure of angle N obviously is 100 degrees because they still have to be supplementary because they're across the figure there, okay? All right, last little example here, guys. Now, this is a big one here. Do your best to keep up with me. Now, in these types of problems, you definitely don't have to do it in any particular order. You just go with the information that presents itself to you. Uh, this is what I call a puzzle type problem. There's no set way to go through it. You don't have to do it in order. You can jump around. Just make sure you fill in all the pertinent information, okay? Now, let's look at this, guys. Let's read the information. It says measure of angle DE is congruent to EC. Okay, that's important. I'm making tick marks. DE and EC are congruent. The measure of angle arc CF is 60 degrees, okay? And we'll put that over here on the outside of my figure. And DE is perpendicular to EC, and it already has that right angle in there. So find the listed measures. Lots of information in this one, guys. You can definitely come back and go over this one again with me and pause at any point, okay? But I'm gonna be moving pretty quick, okay? So, let's go ahead and go through this. Now, I'm gonna start by trying to do this in order, and if I jump around a little bit, then that's just how it is. Now, the first thing I notice, guys, is what we have here on this far right, and I'm just going piece by piece, this is an isosceles right triangle, isn't it? Because this is a right angle, because it's perpendicular, we have two congruent sides, so what that means is we're gonna have two congruent angles. Again, that little piece right there is an isosceles right triangle, so it automatically means the measure of angle one and the measure of angle two are gonna be the same, so that means they're automatically 45 degrees, right? 90 plus 45 plus 45 equals 180. So there you go. Again, guys, lots of information. If you need to come back to this, Watch it over and over again just to make sure you get all these important pieces because there's a lot of review in this problem as well, okay? So isosceles right triangle, both these angles are 45 degrees, okay? Isosceles right triangle. Now I'm moving on to angle three. Now here's something I noticed that's new today. We have line segment AC is a diameter, right? So that means this whole part down here is 180, this whole part up here is 180, two semicircles. We have an angle, angle three, that hits both sides of the diameter. Now that is automatically a right angle, guys, because it's cutting off half the circle. Well, to get the inscribed angle, we divide by two, 180 divided by two, that'd be 90 degrees there. 90 degrees here, okay, well, same thing, same thing here. If I have 90 degrees and 45 degrees here, we see I still have a big right triangle up top, right? 45, 90, that means the measure of angle four is gonna be 45 as well, okay? So this is a bunch of 45, 45, 90 triangles up top. Again, little review mixed in with this problem here, okay? All right. 
Now we're gonna drop down to the bottom hemisphere of our circle to get angle five, six, and seven, then we'll go back and get the arc measures, okay? Now, <clears throat> measure of angle five, it gave us the pertinent information that we need here. We see if we look down the sides of our angle, well, angle five opens up to this arc, which measures 60. So 60 divided by two, that would give us 30 degrees there, okay? 30 degrees, again, 60 divided by two gives us 30, that's the intercepted arc, okay? Measure of angle six, we take a look. Well, we see the measure of angle six cuts off this other piece, this arc AF, right? Well, I can figure out what this is because this whole piece down in the bottom hemisphere is 180, so 180 minus 60, that gives us 120 degrees. Everybody see that? So if arc AF is 120, that means measure of angle six is 60 because it's its inscribed angle. Everybody see that? We solve from 120, divided, uh, subtracting from 180, 60 from 180 gave us 120. Well, angle six is its inscribed angle, so we divide by two. That's where we get 60 from. All right, last one, guys. Again, same thing, measure of angle seven. Here we have a triangle where one of the sides is the diameter, so that's automatically a right angle, okay? 90 degrees, that's the middle theorem up top, that 10-7 we talked about a second ago. Okay, now the rest of us is just gonna be finding our arc measures. We already found the measure of arc AF by subtracting from 180, okay? So that gives us 120, we already did that. Measure of angle AB and BC, okay? Well, same thing up top. If we have a 45 degree angle opening up to that arc, where I'm using my finger and my pen to show you which arc is intercepted, we double the 45, that gives us 90. Well, we know the whole thing is 180, so that means this arc over here has to be 90 as well. So that would be 90 degrees and 90 degrees. Okay, all right, guys. There's the set of notes in two parts over inscribed angles. Go back and use these examples to help you work through all of your assignments on Khan Academy and Alex, okay? Feel free to send me an email with any questions, guys. Hope you all are having a good day. Bye.